Hello everyone, my name is Ranak and you are watching VectorWart. So in today's video, we'll take a look on how to use frames and pages to enable basic peer-to-peer -peer navigation in your WinUI 3 app. In this article, we'll create a blank app, use a frame to navigate between pages, add basic pages, pass information between those created pages, and enable caching on those pages, and finally, customize your transition animations. So without any further ado, let's get started. So almost every app requires navigation between pages. Even a simple app with a single content page will typically have a settings page that requires a navigation. In this article, we will walk through the basics of uh, adding an XAML page to your app and using a frame to navigate between those pages. So let's get straight into this video. So uh, if you open Visual Studio, I have this blank package uh, app in my recent templates. You can also search here. If you do not find it in your uh, recent templates or if even if you search, please go through my previous videos where I have explained how to install these templates in detail. Please do check out my previous videos. So moving on to creating a blank app. We can create it via selecting the template and then giving this project a name. Here I will give this project a name called uh, basic navigation and click on create. To run the project, choose debug and start debugging from the menu or press F5. Build and run your solution or on your development computer to confirm that the app runs without any errors. Doing so, you will be displayed with this page. To stop debugging uh, and return to Visual Studio, exit the app or click the stop debugging from the menu. Go to the main window.xaml file and remove any example code that's included in the template and also from the code behind. Next is to use a frame to navigate between pages. When your app has multiple pages, you use a frame to navigate between them. The frame class supports various navigation methods such as navigate, go back and go forward and properties such as back stack, forward stack and back stack depth. When you, when you create a new Windows app SDK project in Visual Studio, the project template creates a main window class. However, it doesn't create a frame or page and doesn't provide any navigation code. To enable navigation between pages, add a frame as the root element of main window. You can do that in the application.onLaunched method override in the app.xaml code behind file. So let's open the app code behind file. So you can find that uh, file in if you go to the solution explorer there you will see under basic navigation the app.xaml file and if you expand that you will find the uh, code behind file here uh, update the on launched override and handle the navigation failed event as displayed on the screen you can find the code where which i am um, pasting here on my github repository i will leave a link in the description please do check it out so that is done the navigate method is used to display uh, the content in this frame and uh, here uh, main dot main page dot xml is passed to the navigate method so the method loads main page in the frame if the navigation to the app's initial window fails a um, navigation failed event occurs and this code throws an exception in the event handler saying fail to load page okay so that is done so next part is to add basic pages the blank app template doesn't create multiple app pages for you. Before you can navigate between pages, you will need to add some pages to your app. And uh, we will do just that. Okay, so let's go to the Solution Explorer. And in the Solution Explorer, right click on your basic navigation project node to open the context menu. Choose Add new item from the context menu and there in the dialog box select win ui node in the left pane and then choose blank app 
sorry blank page in the middle pane in the name box enter main page and press the add button repeat this steps to add uh, the second page and uh, name that page as uh, page 2 Next part is to add uh, content uh, to these pages. So yeah, in the main page dot XAML, replace the, the existing content with the following content that I am pasting on my screen. Again, uh, you will find it in my GitHub repository. I will explain what I am doing um, once I have pasted the code. So let me paste the code here in the grid remove the grid and play paste this code so in this uh, xaml uh, code the a text block element named page title with its text property set to main page as a child element of the uh, root grid is added and then we have a hyperlink button element that is used to navigate to the next page as a child element of the root grid in the main page code behind file we have to do some changes so if you go to the code behind file we'll add a code to handle the click event of the hyperlink button and which will add to enable navigation to page to xaml so if you paste this code the main page is a subclass of the page class the page class has a read only frame property that gets the frame containing the page when the click event handler of the hyperlink button in main page calls frame.navigate, the frame displays the content of page 2. Whenever a page is loaded into the frame, that page is added as a page stack entry to the back stack or forward stack of the frame, allowing for history and backwards navigation. Now, to do the same in page2.xaml, replace the existing content with the J content that is on the screen so let's uh, do the same let's go to page 2.xaml paste the grid it is similar to the grid that we have pasted in main page uh, only thing is that the contents has changed and we'll paste the hyperlink here as well and uh, if you see the uh, navigation is to the main page in this part in the page to code behind file, uh, we have pasted this. Build and run are the application. Click the link that says uh, click to go to page two. The second page that says page two at the top should be loaded and displayed in the frame. Now click the link on the page two to go back to the main page. So you can see whatever changes we have done is uh, working perfectly now next part will be to pass information between pages so your app now navigates between two pages but it is really doesn't do anything interesting yet often when an app has multiple pages the pages need to share information now you are now you will pass some information from the first page to the second page in main page.saml replace the hyperlink button you added earlier with the following stack panel this adds a text block label and a text box name for entering a text string okay Next, um, in the hyperlink button click event handler of the main page, code behind file, here um, add a second parameter uh, to the navigate method that references the text property of the name text box that we added in the stack panel so uh, the second parameter has to be added here so name dot text okay next uh, in page 2 dot xaml replace the hyperlink button you added earlier with the following stack panel that that adds a text block for displaying the text string passed from the main page 
and in the page to code behind file add the following code to override the on navigate to method so now if you run the application uh, you type your name or uh, anything in the text box and then click the link that says click to go to page 2 when the click event of the hyperlink button in main page calls frame.navigate the name.txt property is passed to the page and the value from the event data is used for the message displayed on the page so this is passed as a parameter to the navigate in the page 2 and here it is passed as a uh, navigation event uh, argument and we take that parameter we check it is a string and if it does not create uh, if it does not have any null or white spaces and then finally we uh, update the text property with hello and the uh, value that has been passed also if you do not pass anything it will be just hello so next part we will move to caching so caching a page page content and uh, state is not cached by default so if you like to cache information you must enable it in each page of your app in our basic peer to peer example when you click to uh, the click to go to page one link on page two the text box on main page is set to its default state i will explain it uh, what i mean so uh, to by default it will be uh, disabled so when you type a name here for example uh, when you type the name in the text box and you go to page two and you when you navigate back to main page then uh, text that you have typed earlier will be um, uh, removed or um, it will not be remembered so to avoid that or to retain that name that you have typed in memory or in cache you will have to uh, update a setting in the uh, xaml page so let's go to our xaml page main, main page dot xaml and add a property called navigate cache mode and here you will see uh, three options one will be uh, disabled enabled and required so let's do, change it to enabled and run the application and now let's type a name okay and let's click on the page two and when you go back you will see that the name exists as is it is not cleared but if I change this to disabled and run the application now when you click back to the main page the name you have entered in the text box is cleared okay uh, next uh, is to customize page transition animations by default each page is animated into the frame when navigation occurs the default animation is an entrance animation that causes the page to slide up from the bottom of the window however you can choose different animation options that better suit the navigation of your exam for your app for example you can use a drill in animation to give the feeling that the user is going deeper into your app or a horizontal slide animation to give the feeling that two pages are peers okay so uh, to make this uh, changes in the animation let's go to the hyperlink button click event handler of our main page in the code behind file so and here um, add a third parameter to the navigate method that sets the 
info override parameter to slide navigation transition info with its effect property set to from right. So let's create this slide navigation transition info object and set its effect property to from right. Let me clear this. Okay. Equals to slide navigation transition effect dot. So you have from bottom, from left, from right. So let's select from right. And in the hyperlink button click event handler of the page to code behind file. We'll have, we have to do the same uh, thing or uh, we have to repeat the same. So let me copy this part and uh, let's go to the code behind and paste it here. And in this, uh, let's uh, first set the uh, second parameter as null. There we have the name property, name uh, from the page one or main page. So here we do not send anything. So let's set it as null and here slide animation will set it to from left. So now when you navigate or now when you run the application and navigate between the pages, the pages slide from left and right. So let's see it in action. So I have run the application. And now let me type the name here. And when I click to go to page two, the animation slides to the left and right. So hope you all liked watching this video. If you do, please do subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. Till then, bye bye.